what's going on guys welcome back to the channel and in today's video I wanted to show you guys how you can save a ton of money by making your own soil typically when you start a garden one of the most expensive things that you're gonna uh, find yourself buying is gonna be the soil uh, it could range from um, four or five dollars a bag all the way up to like twenty dollars a bag right and those bags don't don't tend to cover a lot of um, square footage so in this video I'm gonna show you how we make our soil save a, a bunch of money on the back end and we still provide our plants with the nutrients that they need to grow and sustain themselves throughout the grow season all right so let's go back so if you guys are new to the channel I want to say thank you for tuning in and welcome and welcome for your first time if you're not new thanks for, for, for coming back and visiting us again so like I said in today's video we're gonna go over um, uh, making our own soil I'm gonna show you the ingredients that we use and give you some idea of how you can actually make your own and not be not spend a lot of money why he decided to walk past at that time I have no idea <laughs> so um so if that sounds like some some so if that sounds like some content that that you're looking for um that's gonna that's gonna help you in the garden then please don't forget to hit that like button hit the com uh hit the comment section down below uh hit the, the notification bell do all those good things so you'll know when we upload our next video because our videos are geared more towards the beginner gardener because we ourselves are technically beginner gardeners um I hope that didn't just cut me out a lot but uh so because we are ourselves beginner gardeners we want to pass on whatever information whatever knowledge that we have to the rest of the community the new gardening community so that you guys are kind of instead of starting from behind the eight ball you have an advantage going into your growth season um and you're not trying to learn everything as you go like we did right um so with that being said let's go ahead and get into the mix and, and how we're gonna actually throw this soil together. So when I actually create, the, when I make this soil, I use several different components, okay? Um, and, I'm, and I'm also, I also try to keep in mind that all of our, all vegetation, all plants, trees, whatever you're gonna, um, whatever you, you're growing, they're gonna need nutrition, nutrients in the soil to help them grow throughout the season. So with that in mind, with keeping that in mind, I try to make sure I add enough of that to the soil to make sure that they have everything that they need, okay? So I'm going to just show you real quick what I use uh, to create our soil. So one of the key things that, that I like to use is this right here, right? Some of you may already recognize this bag, but this is but this is peat moss. It's a big bag of peat moss. You can get this from any bo big box store, typically about $10 a bag, right? Plus or minus a couple of bucks. Um, if you look at the contents, uh, and I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to post a, a picture of the contents of a, of a, of a, a soil bag, because I don't have any right now, right? But if you look at the ingredient list on a, on a typical garden soil, potting mix bag, a, um, a raised, uh, a raised bed, uh, soil bag or container mix bag, it's typically gonna all say the same thing. It's gonna have peat moss, forestry products, um, maybe some cocoa core, um, some kind of fertilizer, some perlite, some, some vermiculite, all this stuff, right? And it's like, that's on the back of every bag. Now, depend, the only thing that's going to make it different in terms of the percentages of each, of each uh, ingredient used typically about the um, topsoil or the, the recycled um, forest products or the peat moss is going to be whether or not it's going in the ground, in a raised bed, or in a container, right? So today I'm making my container, I'm making my mix for my container because this is the second half of our growth season. Our first one is in the wind and that's a video, another video you know, later down the road, but um, we'll talk about how that one did not pan out so well and why, right? But um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna create some mix that I wanna go, go ahead and throw into this container. So the first thing I'm gonna use is peat moss. Now, because it is going into a container, I wanna have a little bit more peat moss um, than everything else, just a little bit. 
So I'm looking at maybe, um, I, I'm gonna, out, out of the three major ingredients, I'm gonna use peat moss at maybe uh, 50%. And the reason why, the reason for that is because peat moss is really light and airy. So it helps with the aeration of the soil, right? So the roots, um, <clears throat> the roots can really get through the soil and get down, get down uh, deep into to the soil mix and all that good stuff, right? Um, it's not all hard and compacted. Um, and the second thing is, is that it retains moisture really well. So by it being in the container and not being in the ground, it's gonna have the, uh, typically things in the container have a tendency of wanting to dry out a little bit faster, right? Because everything's running out of the bottom. And then whatever's left here uh, in the container, whatever uh, moisture is in the container, is typically gonna dry out in high heat. So I'm gonna use about 50% of peat moss. Now the thing about peat moss that you want to keep in mind is that it retains the moisture really well, but the problem is that if you if you were to dump it all in, peat moss is really, really funny. It, it, if you were to, to combine everything at once and then try to water it and, and, and get it nice and moist, the peat moss is going to kind of reject that moisture. It's going to look like it's rejecting the water at first. So it's not going to absorb really well at first. So you want to actually moisten your peat moss before you add it to your mix. All right. Um, that way, the moisture is the, the peat is. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you in this video how that's going to actually look. But once it's already moist, then you start to put your mix together. It's going to it's going to look a lot better. It's going to be a lot easier to to mix mix in to make sure that it's, that the moisture is consistent throughout. All right. The second thing that we're going to use is like I told you before in terms of the ingredients that's typically on the back of a bat of a. Um, of another soil bag. Typically they like to use recycled forestry products. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna use some topsoil right here. This is nothing more than just a, just a, just a bunch of dirt. Just a bunch of dirt and, and some wood chips, stuff like that, right? Nothing fancy, nothing, nothing fancy at all. Probably doesn't have a lot of nutrition. And the last thing we're gonna use is going to be this here, chicken manure. So typically, I use either chicken manure or I use the steer manure. But for this, since this bag was already open, this is the one I'm going to use. Now, I'm going to use those three, and then I'll, I'm also going to use some perlite to grow in there. Um, and that's going to also help with the moisture retention and all that good stuff as well. <clears throat> Sorry, I got some of this stuff lying around. I'm getting in the, <laughs> getting in the throat and stuff. So, um, so let's go ahead and grow this stuff together so you guys can see how it looks. Um, once, you know, in the process of. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, is this is the container I'm gonna use to plant my next, my next uh, cantaloupe. So I'm gonna fill this about halfway with the peat moss. We got a long way to go. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna go ahead, I only got, that's not even a quarter of the container, but I'm gonna go ahead and wet it now instead of waiting until it gets half full because it's gonna be easier to mix in and uh, mix in the water and get it all nice and thoroughly moist. Okay. And I'm gonna just water, whoops, water this in. Try to do this with two hands. You'll see like this stuff is like, like I said, once it's been wet, it retains water well. But the problem is like, like actually getting it to actually um, start to absorb it so that it's not sitting on top. All right, I think that's, I think that's good. You can see it looks like a brownie mix, right? Got our little got that batch ready. That's done. I'm gonna add some more, and I'm gonna do the same thing. All right, guys. So I went ahead and got my peat moss all filled in. I got half it half full in the container, and I got it nice and moist. And you can see, it's not like uh, over moist. It's not muddy, but it's got. It looks like under under mixed brownie mix, in my opinion. Right. So there's that AC unit again. <laughs> So that's it, that's what I got for that, right? And I tried to get it as consistent as I can throughout. 
so I got very little or very few dry spots. All right, so that's that. That's the peat moss. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add. Well, first, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and add some fertilizer. Normally I, I put this last and I mix it all last, but I'm gonna go ahead and add some fertilizer, some granular fer granular fertilizer. And I'm adding tomato fertilizer uh, specifically because this is a squash. I'm planting cantaloupe in here. And cantaloupe does have the tendency of getting um, blossom end rot. And this fertilizer actually has 7% um, calcium. So that should be a good amount to help the, the cantaloupe to develop really well without, in, without uh, developing that BER, all right? Now the next thing I'm gonna add and I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and add this chicken manure. So this chicken manure is gonna have some nutrition in it also, some, some nitrogen and, and stuff like that. So I'm gonna add that so that the, the plant can have something to feed on as it grows. And I'm gonna use about 25% of that. And then lastly, well not lastly, almost second to last, I'm going to use some topsoil to kind of fill it, right? And everybody has their own way of doing things. This is just my way of doing things, you know, all right? This, the reason I'm adding this on top and not watering it down because it's going to water down. It's going to mix in real easy. And you don't have to mix yours in the container. You can mix it in a wheelbarrow. You can throw it on a tarp. You can put it in a kiddie pool and mix it all in. It doesn't matter. But you do want to make sure that you do get a, uh, give it a good mix once it's all said and done. All right. So there's my topsoil, my chicken manure. I'm going to throw in some more fertilizer. So this granular fertilizer is what's going to feed it over the course of the season. Put a handful of that in there, right? And throughout the growing season, we're also gonna hit it with some, um, with some water-soluble fertilizer, like 511, and then we also have like bud and blown, bud, blood <laughs> and bone meal, which is which we're gonna use too. I'm gonna actually throw that, throw some of that in here as well, but first, put some per perlite in here. Use this perlite to give it a, some more aeration and some more water retention. and then I'm gonna mix it up really well. Okay guys, so now I got everything in there, I got everything mixed up really well. And if you look, check this out. If you look at that, that looks like quality soil, right? Quality soil. It's got the fertilizers in it, got the perlite, peat moss topsoil, and chicken manure. And this, this is gonna be really good for our, um, for our cantaloupe that we're about to put in here, all right? So, now, that's it. All right, guys, so that's it. That's all I got for you guys today. That's how we make our soils, um, and we've done that for everything that we have here. We have bought not one single um, pre-made bag of soil. Everything is, that we have is, is um, we, we put through it together ourselves in the, the exact same method that I just showed you guys, right? Um, and like how many how much money would i have to spend to fill up this container maybe this is maybe two bags right at five dollars a piece that's ten bucks per bag i mean ten uh five bucks a piece that's ten dollars per container excuse me right whereas this bag of peat moss i only use maybe uh a quarter of the bag maybe a quarter of the bag of peat moss when i and that, you guys saw that these two were actually already used before we even started using it to make our mix and we still have some of that left still have a big bag of perlite left this is like 20 bucks from home depot for this big uh two cubic square foot bag 56 liters whatever whichever whichever one you want to use and then we threw some fertilizer in there and the fertilizer uh, you could use your fertilizer of choice, your favorite one. Doesn't matter. Just use one, right? And that's gonna feed throughout the for the next three, three to six months, maybe. Um, now I'm gonna add some more 
fertilizers to this um, bone meal, blood meal, when I actually put the cantaloupe in there, but that's gonna be in a different video, all right? Um, Cause we're trying to catch up, trying to catch up here in our video making. So um, that's it, you know, um, not even, man, probably not even five dollars to fill up this considering everything that I use not even not even five dollars per container versus um, buying two bags at ten dollars per container right so that's uh, that's a, a good amount of uh, savings right there so um, thank you guys for tuning in don't forget to comment like subscribe hit the notification bell do all those things um, if you found value in this channel if this helps you out in, uh, in the, the slightest bit um, and until next time, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you guys in the next video. Y'all take care. Peace out.